Happy guinea pig! Hi, I'm Molly. Welcome to my kitchen. And today I am making, uh, well, I guess people could say they've seen it before, but it is a orange cream cheese bar. Kind of got inspired by the strawberry brownie bar thing I did the other day. And uh, it was a little sweet because of the uh, glaze I put on it. So I thought, well, what would you happen if you put cream cheese in one? So I had the orange cake mix. And this just happens to be Duncan Hines. It's what was on the shelf, what was cheapest, you know, that's what I bought. I've got one box of Duncan Tine cake mix. I have a one four ounce container of applesauce, a fourth of a cup of oil, and I'm going to use two eggs. And that's what I'm putting in. You got three there. Me. One egg goes with the powdered sugar. And the half. Uh. I have uh, slightly over a quarter of a cup. Uh, a little bit more than a quarter of a cup of powdered sugar and a little bit less than a third of a cup. So, roughly a quarter of a cup. And I have four ounces, four to five ounces of cream cheese. And I'm using some vanilla extract. And this is the extract. This is not the flavoring, honey. That is a real deal right there. That ain't no beaver butt juice. No, this is La Vinciadora. And uh, I, I just got it opened up. Got a good whiff of it the first time, and I told Piggy, I said, there's a big difference. And I just got through, uh, I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. They just uh, let me know it was 350. Ready. Yep, so I'm going to go ahead and set that timer up so I can get this done. Before I start on the cake, I'm going to go ahead and mix in the cream cheese, the powdered sugar, now, my cream cheese is not at room temperature, but it is kind of softened. So is it, that all going to go together? Yeah, this is all going to go together. Oh, just, okay. Um, I'm going to put one egg in here. Well, I said I was. If I can get it cracked open, y'all. There we go. It's a tough nut to crack. I'm saying. And uh, let me get me a stuck towel for that. Wipe my fingers. Normally, if I had my apron on, I'd wipe my, on my apron, but I don't got my apron on. All right. Y'all, the inaugural usage of this for us. First I'm gonna time. Use, instead of two, I'm, it, normally, I use about one teaspoon. I'm going to use a little over one teaspoon. Maybe oh, two. Don't forget, you're dealing with the real deal there. I know. But it, I want it to be vanilla because I want it to work with this uh, orange cake mix and make like an orange dreamsicle bar. Okay. You know how you have the orange and vanilla? Okay. Now, Miss Linda told me that this uh, bottle, if you uh, put the lid on it, can get kind of sticky and hard to get out. So I'm wiping the top off before I put the lid back on. And that's going to go back there. Get that cleaned up. Now I'm just using a fork, and I'm going to start mixing all this stuff right here together. Hopefully. Mixy, mixy. Yeah. Don't be tricksy. I don't want it to be overly runny. I want it to be a little bit runny, but it's also a little bit solid, if that kind of makes any sense. Because I want to be able to put it on the cake mix and easily swirl it in to the cake mix. Uh, you don't want it to be liquid, it's just sort of yeah. creamy. Creamy, yeah, that's it. Piggy's got the right word for me. This time. <laughs> I get one every once in a while. Yeah. I may hand this piggy to finish creaming up for me over there while I make up my cake mix. There you go, piggy. Thank you. Get that all incorporated for me. Now I'm going to move that pan. Now I have sprayed my pan with some baking spray, y'all. I'm going to have to squish it some more with the fork. Okay. Do what you got to do. Me and I'll fix that. And I'm just going to pour that. Y'all, I went ahead and opened that bag up so I'd have it ready to go. This, this is when you need a mortar and pestle. Yeah. I would have got out the mixer, but I didn't really want to have to deal with that. Okay, we'll go ahead and put the two eggs in here. That's what this really needs is mortar and pestle to work it around and beat it down. And You have a spoon or something to work with. 
whatever you want to use, Piggy. Well, I've already got the fork rather involved. <laughs> I see you do. Piggy's good, yeah. He really is. Sometimes if it wasn't prim, I wouldn't get things done. Hey, it takes two. Especially the older you get. Figure I make Piggy a treat because we gotta get started rearranging the bedrooms this evening. Y'all, we're night. I'm, I'm night owl, so I get I do my best work at night. Uh, when rearranging, cleaning, washing clothes, cooking, all that stuff, really. Right. I have more energy at night. She really does. I, 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 I function better at night. You, okay. you catch her early morning or towards the midday, you know, even, even when she's sleeping at night. And it's like catching somebody about... One to three o'clock in the morning, and they're, when they look at you, huh? Yeah. But at night, she's all sorts of wide awake. Yep. I've always been a night owl. I mean, there's been times I've had to work early morning hours, but I'm still a night owl. I've had jobs where I've worked every shift you could imagine. And flip around back and forth on those shifts on the same job. Yeah. And I'm not talking about day six weeks, night six weeks. I'm talking about having to get off early in the morning, be back in there that afternoon. Yeah. Work that, get off of that, sleep a little bit, be back early that next morning. Or do a full day. Had to go in that night. I'm going to tell you, sometimes you got to do what you got to do, but I'm just going to tell y'all folks. Do not make the job your life. If you've got a wife or kids, or, if, or if you're, even if you're divorced and have kids, devote time to your family. Because you never know when you ain't going to have that family to devote time to. Well, there's that. There's also, you know, a lot of people don't understand, you know, that Sometimes you got to work long hours. Yeah. Husband and wife both in order <laughs> just to make it. So, you know. Today's economy, yes. You know, having an appreciation for somebody who's willing to get out there and work for it and you come home and all like that, you got to remember what you're in it for. That's it. All right, yeah. So um, you cherish the time that you do get. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got this right here. I'm trying to get this spoon cleaned off, y'all. Yeah. I'm gonna have to do a spoon. Okay. Well, while Piggy's finishing up on that right there, we'll take us a quick break and we'll be back when he gets that done. And I'll start putting this together. All right, we're going to put, I'm going to put about half this cake mix in here. Good my half, good my half. Or orange bar mix or whatever you want to call it. Might put a little bit more of that in there. I just kind of want to get it. I just got it cut sweet and eat it. Technically, it is a cake mix, so that's what we're going to call it. Even though we're going to make it into a... Uh, snack bar. I uh, see how it turns out, anyhow. Yeah. Well, we gotta get about two thirds of it in there. How's that? It's a little on the thick side, which you, that's the way I wanted. I did not want it to be a loose batter. Yeah, we like it thick. Now the cream cheese batter is going to be a little bit looser than what I had thought it might be. You know what? That's okay. I'm going to pour that on here. That just makes sure it gets in there. All the rest of it real good. Yep. That's what this is all about, folks. It's experimenting. Yep, I'm experimenting. This is not a recipe set in stone. You 
don't work out too great. Figure out what might make it better. I'll try it again. I'll try it again. That's right. Something don't turn out the way you want it. Don't mean it's not a fail. It's a learning curve. You learn from it. I think it's going to be good because it's got a great smell to it. You're using real vanilla. Using real vanilla, I'm using. Which, I mean, if you if all you got is imitation vanilla. I ain't got nothing against that either. That's what I normally use right there. <clears throat> imitation vanilla. Because that's what I could afford. Mm -hmm. I just happen to be blessed with this. That was a blessing. A blessing. All right, and you see I'm just kind of cutting that batter I put on the top into that cream cheese mixture I put in there. Yeah, I'm just going to mm. I got to wash my hands anyway. But that, y'all, is good. Mm. That's really good. So I'm going to put this in the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes until it is baked through. And then we will take it out. Let it cool for about 15 20 minutes. Maybe even put it in the refrigerator and let it cool for about an hour or so. So, like I said, let's set the timer for 25. There we go, 25 minutes. We'll see how it is. If I have to put it in for a little bit longer, I will. And uh, what we may do is just uh, I'll let you know how long it took to cook and how long I let it sit to cool before we come back and do our taste test. All right, it's out of the oven. It cooked for exactly 25 and a half minutes, which is what I had it set for. I put it uh, in the refrigerator and let it sit for about an hour, and it's good and cool. And I'm going to take, and I'm just using my little butter knife thing here. And I know I didn't cut it straight. I see that. It's kind of wonky. <laughs> I'm kind of wonky. What can well, I say? we're wonky, so I mean, you know. It's... They'll get over it. That's what I'm saying. They'll get over it. It'll eat the same. Ooh. Well, it it blended. It blended into the dough. I, mean, I don't see the cream cheese layer. I'll turn it around that way. All right. I'll give you the bigger piece, baby. <laughs> now, I guess that swirl on the top could be the cream cheese layer. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. Yes. That is good. Mm-hmm. It does almost taste like a drink sickle. Mm-hmm. It turned out more cake-like because I used the applesauce along with the oil. That's why it's so thick and not as dense as the strawberry one. But you know what? That's good. Soft, moist. Mm-hmm. Not overly sweet. No, it's not actually. I can actually eat this. And you can't really taste the vanilla in it. It's like it, it brought everything together, though. It kind of gives it that dream sickle flavor. Mm hmm. But yeah. Oh, man, that's good. Well, yeah, these are my, or my orange cream cheese bars. Like I said, you can see the swirl on top for I swirled it all together. It doesn't go all the way down through it, but it does, you can definitely taste it. Might as well call it orange cream cheese cake. Orange cream cheese cake. That's basically what it is. Because it's not a bar. No, it's not a bar. It is a definitely a cake. Hey, bye, dear, dear. But uh, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. And uh, if y'all make it, let me know and tell me how you liked it. 
Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. We're fireballs.